Hello gainers, I'm Ralphie and welcome to my little channel on YouTube called Fitter Philosophy in which I discuss practical, experienced based, stoic, philosophical observations that are as removed as I can make them from the academic environment of bookcases and quotes from Plato and Socrates and of course uh, Marcus Aurelius very good book by the way let me see if I can remember the name of it uh, no I can't <laughs> I'll post a link below uh, one of the the best practical stoic philosophy books ever written but I can't remember the name of it right now because I'm busy recording a video and my mind is in other things um, specifically a comment that was left on my last uh, video by Dev David7185. And David is basically uh, complimenting Billy the Cat, who made a guest appearance in the last video, and um, commenting that the cats, cats and humans, you know, are a credit to one another. Uh, interestingly, whereas humans adopted dogs and domesticated dogs for their usefulness. Cats adopted humans, right? Humans never adopted cats. Cats first appeared in the scene many thousands of years ago to deal with the vermin that were attracted to human waste and human um, activity, m mice and rats, etc. And uh, it was cats that adopted humans. And um, it's just one of those little interesting observations. And the thing about cats is that they're endlessly complicated even when you get to know them. Um, they keep so much to themselves in what they have as a particularly expressionless face. Anyway, I'm starting to get a little bit sidetracked there. Let's focus on this video because the final comment that David made was being grounded is a necessary part of the survival strategy in today's world. And I want to kind of focus on the meaning of being grounded. Um, what is the dictionary definition of being grounded? And it's something that we should all be aware of. The, de the, the, the dictionary, the formal shorthand dictionary interpretation is being well balanced and sensible. But the thing is, how do you define sensible? Because some people can be completely not sensible and rather well-grounded and other people can appear well-grounded, but, you know, they're maybe too sensible. They start to undermine themselves, the opportunities. And so it is open to interpretation. But... I want to kind of highlight the seven signs of grounded people and why we should all aspire to be more grounded. In other words, on the ground. And it, me it means being grounded means that you're anchored. You are in touch with the presence that supports your life directly, manifestly, materially. So we're talking about the earth, the element of earth. Uh, so to be grounded means to have your feet firmly planted on the earth. And to be not grounded basically means that you have got weak stability, that you are more vulnerable, that you're more susceptible to being influenced by others to your detriment. So We'll start with the word sensible here. Sensible is made up of two words, sense and able. Sense is the, the definition of sense is to perceive, to use our senses, to gain feedback in which to live our lives. And able is from the word ability. And basically that means competency in understanding what a definitive interpretation is and adhering to it in such a way that it is successful. Right. I'm not going to go any further with that. But sensible is the, the bringing together the conjunction of two words, sense, 
able. And within the within that referential framework, the seven signs of grounded and sensible people are that they have what is generally described as a, a sensible outlook in life. So that their approach from the inside world in which they inhabit, in which we all inhabit, to the outside world is such that they see things as they are and not as they think they are. They're not so easy deluded. Um, they are practical base. They see things for what they are. They don't overcomplicate and they don't impose dogma and irrational principles on something where rationality and basic workable principles apply. The second thing is being focused in the present. I have mentioned in previous videos that one of the skills in life is is living successfully in the now, in the present tense. Where, when, wherever we are in our lives, outside of ourselves, we are constantly in the presence, wherever that is. Inside, we have the ability, particularly in our mind, but also emotionally, to move to the past tense, in other words, to remember things, or move to the future tense, in terms of an anticipation, whether it be good or bad. So, to, to be at times distracted by the past and the future to the detriment of the present is something that less grounded and non-grounded people are more inclined to. The more fanciful, fanciful people. People who are the, basically are described often as having their heads in the clouds are people who are not present focused. Next thing is clarity of thought. The clarity of thought you think would be very much a matter of fact but you can see particularly in the younger generation who have been poisoned by chemicals the most poisoned generation in human history uh, with the level of the, the volume of chemicals the plastics the pharmaceuticals the uh, food chemicals the processing pesticides herbicides the younger generation are increasingly waking up and becoming aware of the ambient toxicity which is growing within themselves and calling them ca causing them unease and discomfort and anxiety and stress because physical distress will inevitably manifest itself mentally because the mind and body are inseparable so when people are starting to get mentally confused and vulnerable, it's a sure sign that they, the, they lack being grounded, but there's, by the way, most of the time, there's actually very legitimate reasons for this. And you only have to look at the over-refinement of breakfast cereals, fast food, uh, and certainly vegetarians have it as bad as meat eaters. The amount of chemicals dumped on food crops, which are increasingly nutritionally deplete, particularly in minerals and, and other trace elements, um, it's never been greater than it is now. That people are programmed, people are brainwashed, people, unfortunately, um, are unable. It's l they're less able to get grounded because more distractions to direct them away from being grounded are being being thrown at them. Uh, within the white noise of, of messaging, whether it be school, certainly at colleges and universities, um, but also later in life. We, we all know and we've met these people who they struggle in life because they're not grounded, because they're too busy. They haven't been able to re-edit and upgrade their personal software of their programming based on the realities around them. Another thing is being well connected to the environment. Um, this comes on from clarity of thought. The more clearly we think, the more we re-gauge what is valuable in life, what really matters, and what really matters is connecting successively, successfully with our environment. This is why we need to move in a positive environment. It's not just being surrounded by positive people that lifts us up and being surrounded by negative people that brings us down. 
when we live and move within a positive environment, it elevates us and a negative environment diminishes us. This is very self-evident. And this is why being connected to our environment, when we have a positive environment, we get more out of it because we have this grounded disposition to connect more strongly to it. Whether it be, I'll give you a great working example, going to botanic gardens and actually walking more slowly and looking at the flowers more closely for longer because plants and flowering plants and the smells and the sights are one of nature's great positive tonics which are still routinely underrated and underappreciated unfortunately by the majority of people um, who would rather have a bit more uh, another can of monster yeah you know what I'm talking about and another hour on TikTok. There you go. After which they'll switch on the tel well, this television will already be switched on, but then they'll go and watch some legacy media and just get gaslit and made fearful. The next thing is emotional strength and resilience. To be resilient is to be tough, is to me be mentally strong. When we're mentally strong, by default, we become more physically strong whatever our circumstances, whatever our condition. So to, to have emotional, not just rational strength, but emotional strength, not to be too happy about happy things and not to be too distressed about distressing things, to anchor ourselves, particularly in the choppy seas of other people's circumstances which affect us directly. Another thing is the perspective, and this comes from the emotional strength and resilience. It comes from being well connected to the environment, and it's to do with perspective and self, on self awareness and on awareness of others. To have perspective, what does that mean? It has, like a, a, a telescope has perspective, a microscope has perspective, a lens has perspective. You find it when you're looking at paintings, you find it when you are looking at the human condition and circumstances, that you see things as they really are, not as they are presented to you. So to have this perspective on others and importantly on ourselves, to know our strengths, to strengthen them, to know our weaknesses, to undermine our weaknesses. This is a key part of, of being grounded. Being grounded can be a simple, simple, practical thing as just being, having common sense, a little bit more common sense than the average, but it can also, being grounded can be so much more. The gurus, the enlightened ones, those who, who, who achieve mandala um, and, and understand the path of lives through all the realities, they are supremely grounded. Uh, for those of us, who are still got so much to learn, when we know we have much to learn, we are more grounded. Uh, so I'll leave that with you. That is my thoughts in the matter. And again, thank you to David7185 for that little comment in my last video, which I just picked, I just picked up on it and found very inspirational to create the content for this video. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.